Hello there and welcome to another video of this T4AD series. Now in this one I'm going to show you how you can squeeze about 20 to 22% more or less more raw CPU power from this fun little laptop by just swapping the original uh, fan with a modified one, the one that comes with the older brother of, of, of this uh, laptop, the one that comes with by default in the uh, model that has a GPU on it. Now since that model needs to cool both GPU and CPU, the dual pipe fan solution is the one that's used there. Now the idea is to use the same dual pipe single fan solution in our laptop model that doesn't have a GPU. So we basically change the stock one uh, with the modded one and we, we, we do some kind of adaptation that I will show you in a bit how to do. It's very easy, very simple. And the idea behind is that if you are able to remove a little bit more heat from the CPU, this CPU will just work at higher velocity pretty much and sustain that um, speed during, during time better. And this is a theory but I also tested it and it actually uh, I mean it, it behaves like so so here what you see is in the top uh, view you have the modded version and in the bottom one you have the stock version of the same computer but what you can notice is that the speed on the modded one it's like 200 megahertz more uh, than on average higher than the one that's on the uh, bottom that one that comes with the stock uh, version of uh, this uh, cooler solution yeah you can you can clearly appreciate how during time uh, the dual the modded version it's able to sustain that velocity and if you noticed also on the right side uh, on the stock solution the power the total power of the cpu it's about 17 watts and in the modded solution of the same cpu uh, the total power averages about uh, around 20 21 watts so it's a small difference there but regardless it's about 20 percent increase on the actual cinebench uh, results which i think is nice because again it's a soldered cpu it's uh, one of the parts that you cannot improve on this on this laptop and i think it's it, it it's 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 a fun project to if, if you really love this and you want to get the last drop of of, of research out of this hardware it's 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 an easy mod to do it's basically free compute power to you if if you want to do it it's not um, very expensive and in my opinion if if you're a little like me a little bit uh, you like tinkering with stuff uh, it, it will be very easy to and and fun project to to work with now here are the results as you can see in the cinebench uh, the the modded uh, solution uh, marks around 3330 points on the multicore and the stock one has 2730 points now i repeated these tests like three times each and on average it's always the same uh, more or less 100 points up or down for each uh, case so it's definitely an improvement and that's why I want to show you guys how to do this mod and hopefully you tell me in the comments if how it went or if you actually uh, went ahead and, and, and do it or not or if you have any questions about it, okay? Now, let's just jump in with the actual mod and how to do it. And again, I, show, I wanted to show you the results beforehand so you know at least if you're interested in continuing seeing the video or not. Okay, let's jump right in. Okay, so this step it's uh, very straightforward. First, you need to disable the uh, internal battery from the bias. Now, before you actually remove the heat sink and the fan, uh, what you need to do is to remove the physical connector of the battery to the motherboard. And after that, you need to remove the actual fan connector to the motherboard. But it doesn't matter if you remove the fan connector first and then remove the screws or the other way around as I do it here. For example, here I'm just uh, removing the screws first and the uh, fan connector after that, it doesn't matter. Now, once you have the screws removed, just a quick pull a little bit the fan connector and it pops just right out and wiggle a little bit the entire heatsink and that's it. 
So there you have it. I put them one side by side, the new one and the old one. As you can see, they're basically the same, but they have like two pipes and that's it. The new one, uh, generally when you buy them, they, they come with um, the default um, thermal paste. I use the Noctua one that I have a spare from some other installations. You can leave this one if you want. In my case, I prefer to remove it and do just that. Remove it and clean it. Uh, so I put my new paste on uh, the CPU. For the cleaning, I just used a little bit of alcohol with a cloth and just carefully remove any remaining uh, paste around there and that should be it. Now, take note of that little uh, square over there. That square is where the dedicated GPU chip should be since we don't have one, we need to do the actual mod to this um, dual pipe uh, heatsink in order to isolate that metal part of the heatsink from getting in contact with the actual contacts of the motherboard. Yeah, so let's just jump into it and I'll explain you how I did it, but you can use whatever you have um, on hand to do the same. Now this part is optional. You can remove or not the old or the original thermal paste. In my opinion, it's good enough. It depends on you if you want to remove it or not. Since I'm going everything clean, I remove it completely. And after having the heat sink cleaned and uh, with the paste removed, now is the fun part of, of this project, right? You need to apply this uh, tape, this adhesive tape. I will put you a link here somewhere and just cut it to the size of uh, the part we want to cover. It's about 30 millimeters wide. And after making sure that that sticks on, on the actual uh, pipes and everything, it covers everything nice. I put just for good measure, um, a little bit of thermal pads that I have spare for uh, SSDs and whatnot. And you just cut it just for give it a little bit of, of space between the contacts and this tape in case some of them manages to get through, which I don't think. This is kind of paranoia of my part. So I just did that, but this step, I, I would say it's optional. Do it if you want. I left the other plastic on the other side because that's, no, actually I removed it. Yeah, I, I thought I left it there, but no, I removed it. Um, and that's it. Now, just to apply the, the entire solution here. Uh, first, what I like to do is to align it a little bit, just to make sure everything uh, covers what needs to be covered. You don't want to leave uh, not a little bit of uh, tiny metal over there loose in case you don't want problems. Now I use, I don't use an Octo, I use an Arctic thermal compound. I have thermal paste. Just, I did my best to apply this uh, over here. Some of you might cringe at this point because uh, I know the other part of the CPU, it's not supposed to have thermal paste. I don't care. This is a test unit. I do it regardless. I saw on the internet people that do cover that one and people that don't cover that one. I mean, the small part you see on the right uh, in this case. Now, I don't do a great job at applying paste. I did my best and it. I can sleep at night. So with your own unit, do whatever you consider. Now, just make sure you put everything over um, where the screws should go and make sure that everything is aligned. Everything should go nice in place without uh, trapping any any uh, cable underneath and slowly just start tightening them one by one, go one after the other. It doesn't matter actually when just make sure that all of them have the same pressure and they're tightened more or less equally. You don't need to over tighten them also because I know if you over tighten the screws, it's a word, but you get my point. Um, yeah, just make sure everything is nice and, and snug there. You don't want to leave any of them loose so that everything is um, in its place, right? Next point will be to actually connect the fan. First, I prefer to connect the fan. I think it's easier uh, to, to manipulate this way the cables. <clears throat> Just plug it in. That's it. Nothing very complicated. Make sure it's it fits well into the socket. Now, and the last one would be to connect the actual battery. And 
that's pretty much it. I mean, once you have everything connected, make sure that you don't forget any other cable and that will be basically the, the end of this mod. I, I really hope you like it and definitely it has some measurable outcome to it, a positive one in my opinion. And if you did it or not, just let me know in the comments because um, again, I do this for fun. Um, I, I really enjoy uh, tinkering with this stuff. So if any one of you try this in the end, just ping me in the comments and let me know. Have fun with this little laptop and see you in the next one.